Good day everyone and once again we're back together just looking at uh, question two of our our May, uh, actually our November 2022 exam. So if you haven't subscribed please just make sure that you're part of the family and of course uh, you can join in as a member uh, so that you can benefit from our valuable perks all right. So let's jump right into it we're looking at organic chemistry. So uh, question two, they give us uh, A to F in the table below, uh, represent six organic compounds, right? They look really complicated, but uh, don't worry. We know we, we've got this, right? Okay, so uh, they say to us, the first question, write down the letters that represent two organic compounds that are isomers of each other. Now, when I look at that, right, um, let's see. So compound A, there's bromine there, so that's a haloalkane. Is there any other that is a, a haloalkane there uh, with bromine? It does not look like that is the case. Uh, B is an alkyne, uh, there is no other alkyne there. All right, let's look at compound C. C would be a, um, uh, um, that is, okay, so that's, that has C double bond O with an H. That's an aldehyde, okay, and in this case with four carbons. And let's see, um, uh, D would be a ketone. So look at it, please, ladies and gents, don't make a mistake there. So it means this is our chain over here, right? So that would make this a ketone, right? Uh, it has four carbons and that's an aldehyde with uh, four carbons as well. So these are functional isomers of each other. If you look at the number of carbons, you've got four carbons there, right? Um, if you look at the number of hydrogens, it's three plus two plus two plus that one so that would make that nine carbons okay uh, so uh, that's five seven eight sorry eight carbons so this would be c four h eight with uh, an o right the same is true for this one c four h eight right and uh, three plus two plus three uh, in this case that would be eight plus that oxygen there. So I hope that you can see those are actually functional isomers of each other. That's an aldehyde as well as a, um, a, a ketone, right? So they said write down only letters. Please remember, ladies and gents, so when I write the answers to that, please uh, adhere to the instructions of the, um, you know, of, of the examiner. So that would be compound C, and D. Those are isomers of each other, right? Okay, so um, let's see. Uh, they say the type of isomers chain, functional or positional, identified in 2.1.1. So remember, we said these are functional isomers. So we are just going to write functional there, right? Okay, these are organic compounds, same molecular formula, but in this case, they belong to two different um, uh, homologous uh, groups, or we can say they have two different functional groups. Okay, right, so 2.1.3. Uh, by the way, I've got that last question that you can see there, you know, where they talk about the empirical formula. I thought that was really, really interesting. We'll, we'll, we'll look at that a little bit later on. Right, so um, they say, uh, write down the name of the functional group. Uh, oh, no, uh, 2.1.3, sorry. The general formula uh, of the homologous series uh, to which compound, uh, C, uh, compound B belongs, right? So remember, we are looking for the general formula. Compound B is an alkyne, right? So remember for alkynes. Uh, that is CnH2n minus 2, right? For alkanes, that would be CnH2n plus 2. Uh, for alkenes, CnH2n, 
but for alkynes we know that is CnH2n minus 2. That's the general formula of that group. Right, they, uh, the last one, they say uh, name of the functional group of compound F, right? So we need to go and identify what F is, right? But uh, look at that, there's an OH group, right? Um, only an OH group, and in this case, hydroxide ion. So that makes this an alcohol, right? Uh, but they want the name of the functional group, right? So we say that is the hydroxide ion. Uh, you can say hydroxyl or you uh, ion, or you can simply say it's the hydroxide hydroxide group, right? That is the functional group of that homolo of uh, um, alcohols right now the name the next question they say write down the IUPAC name of a b and c so i'm just going to go back and let's look at a b and c right now first of all ladies and gents please remember let's try to identify what would be the longest chain there and remember that the longest chain doesn't necessarily have to be uh, in this case, a uh, linear, all right, meaning in a straight line. So we're going to identify our longest chain. Uh, I can see in A that would be my longest chain, right? So my longest chain constitutes of one, two, one, two, three, four five and six right so the longest chain has got six carbons right it's a snaking chain of some sort all right and what we need to do we need to give the position of that bromide ion there right and we always give in this case when we give the position we have to give from the side that is closest to the functional group which is the uh, uh you know that high uh, that uh, bromide ion there so it is closest from uh, this side, okay, from uh, the bottom there. So I'm going to say, look, this is carbon number one. This is carbon number two. It's at carbon number three. That's carbon number four, five, and six. If you had started counting from this side, your uh, bromide would have been at carbon number four. And in that case, it's not closer from... Uh, that left hand side okay right and now note in this case you've got two methyl groups okay so you've got a methyl there you've got a methyl there right so we are going to start with our bromide so that would be a uh, three bromo so for this guy it's going to be three bromo okay that's going to be uh uh, 4 comma 4 so we've got those methyl groups sitting on the same carbon so that would be 4 comma 4 dimethyl okay and of course in this case we've got a, a single bonds and our longest chain is six carbons so that's going to be hexane okay right so that's three promo 4,4 dimethyl, right, hexane. All right, that is the name. So for B, um, again, we're going to identify our longest chain. And our longest chain in this case must have that functional group, which is the triple bond. Okay, so our longest chain would be uh, this one here. Uh, I see. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, or you could say 1, 2, 3, 4, and take this one it really doesn't matter uh, the fact is the longest one would still be five carbons right so again uh, where is it closest from our uh, i mean to our functional group right if i started counting from the left you'd see that uh, that uh, triple bond is at carbon number three whereas if i started counting from the right it would be one two Right, so it would be at carbon number two. So I'm going to start counting from the right. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so now once again, ladies and gents, what are we going to do? We're going to say, right, 
uh, we've got two methyl groups again. So I've got a methyl and a methyl there, right? So we start with that. So this is going to be 4,4 4 dimethyl, okay? So that's 4,4 4 dimethyl, right? And we know between carbon number 2 and 3, we've got an uh, ion there. So uh, the longest chain is going to be 5, so that's pent. So that's going to be pent uh, 2. That's it, carbon number, between carbon number 2 and 3, we take the smaller number. So that's going to be pent 2 ion. All right, I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. Right, so um, if you haven't watched our video on naming of organic compounds, please have a look at that. And that will help you so much in terms of uh, this section. Okay, and then let's look at C. Uh, remember, they said to us uh, A, B, and C. So C, again, four carbons, right? Uh, in this case, uh, it's a carbon, uh, sorry, it's an aldehyde. So we don't necessarily need to number. Aldehydes always have uh, the functional group at carbon number one, right? So we know where that would be located or positioned. So that would be a, a but okay, that's but um, a butanal, okay, so aldehydes, remember, have got that suffix al, right, so that's butanal, okay, right, so we found uh, the names, uh, I don't know if you'd want me to repeat that there, I think we've already uh, answered uh, that question over there. So please remember, for compound A, we said that would be 3-bromo, 4,4-dimethylhexane. All right, for B, that would be 4,4-dimethylpen2-ion. And for C, that would be butanal. Okay, right, let's go on to the next one. They say to us, we've got compound F. They say compound F reacts with a carboxylic acid to form compound S in the presence of a strong acid. Ah, we know already they are talking about esters there, right? Okay, so 2.3.1. They say that write down the type of uh, reaction that takes place. Okay, so uh, compound F. Remember, compound F is our alcohol in this case, right? It is an alcohol. Uh, it's actually uh, one... Um, uh, butanol, right? Or you can say butan one all, right? So in this case, um, we say that's esterification. That's esterification. That's going to be the type of reaction that takes place, right? And then for 2.3.2, .2, which is, um, uh, they give us compound S, uh, has an empirical formula of uh, C3H6, uh, with an O, and as a molecular mass of uh, uh, 116 grams per mole, right? They want us to write down the molecular formula. So uh, for this empirical formula, ladies and gents, so let's count what would be uh, the molecular formula of this empirical formula first and see, uh, in this case, what would be the factor of that empirical formula right, to uh, the actual molar and molecular mass that we're given. So I'm going to find out what the molar mass is for C3H6O, right? So that's three carbons, so that would be three times. Now remember, when you go to the periodic table, uh, unfortunately I didn't attach it here, so the ca uh, carbon is 12, right, as a molar mass of 12, plus we've got six hydrogens, so that's six times one, hydrogen as a molar mass of one, plus oxygen, right, which is 16. So uh, let's pull out our calculator. So we're going to say three times 12 uh, plus six uh, plus 16, and that gives us 58, right? So that's 58 grams per mole, right? Uh, this is for the empirical formula. But now what we need to find out is the molecular formula. So uh, we want to know, in this case, um, we're going to take the uh, molar mass that is given there, which is 116, right? 
we're going to divide by that 58 there that we got, right? So I'm going to say, right, so the molar mass, um, in this case, I'm, I'm calculating, well, the factor. So that would be 116, right, divided by uh, 58. I'm sure most of you have already seen that. So in this case, that would give us 2. So it means for the molar mass of the actual uh, compound, right, it would be every atom, okay, uh, multiplied, you multiply every uh, number there by 2. So therefore, um, the molecular formula, uh, molecular formula, um, formula, uh, would be equal to, so uh, that would be 3 multiplied by that factor 2, so that would be C6, right, H, that's 6 multiplied by that factor 2 again, that's H12, and for oxygen, that's 1, right, uh, multiplied by 2, so it will be O2. So it means that the molecular formula that we have is C6H12O2. Uh, and that is how the cookie crumbles. I hope that you understood that, right? And of course, I'm going to continue to give you more and more of these as the week goes by. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe and like. And of course, uh, you can recommend the channel to as many people as possible. From me for now, I'll see you next time. Shop, shop.